trusting God's timing. Thank you, God. And it was back during the Christmas time, there was a commercial for Oreos, which I really love this commercial. This is where it just like pierced my heart even more, thinking of hold on, mm -hmm. I'm coming. And I know it's a song, okay, this is what, what sparked it, but it gave me a different insight. So the commercial is an African-American Santa, and he goes to say ho, ho, but he doesn't say it in that vibrant voice he normally says, ho, 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 it wasn't there. So he calls, I think it was Sasquatch, it was a big, or Bigfoot, it's a big, white, furry bear, but it's not your normal bear. And he calls, he said, we have a problem. And he said, oh, I know what to do. So the bear, the Sasquatch, I'm going to call him Sasquatch because he's like six foot, like ten feet tall. And he's thin. Yes, an abominable snowman. That's who it is. And he goes to the store and he picks up the Oreos. And then the song comes on, hold on, I'm coming. And I started to think about it. <laughs> I, I was like, woo, yeah, Lord. And then I started seeing it in a different light. I started seeing the abominable stone man as the angel bringing, the, bringing what delivering to me. It may have been the Oreos, but it was delivering to me that the things that I have been praying and seeking God for, it was just saying, hold on. God was saying, hold on, I'm coming. And then this he delivers them yeah. to me. So I, that's what I got out of the commercial. It was for Oreos, but I got a whole other thing out of the commercial. And so every time I hear this song, and then you probably have heard it for other commercials too, some other commercials started biting back off of that Christmas one, and you hear it over and over again, I believe it's for delivery service. But every time it comes, every time it comes on, my mind goes into a spiritual mode of thinking of I'm coming. Hold on, I'm coming. And that's where my mind reflects to. So we at times, we, we can always, our, our life itself is always a season of waiting, right? Yeah. And we have moments where God, where we're waiting and waiting for God to come. And your answer is not delayed, but he just is not denied. It just seems to be a little bit delayed because we want everything in an instant. We want, when we pray, we expect it, we really expect it to happen like in that microsecond. But there's, in these times of waiting, we're waiting for our breakthroughs. We're waiting for the answers of various prayers, maybe deliverance financial deliverance, maybe we have some trials, we have personal problems, we have family issues, relationship issues, work issues, life, just life itself can be an issue. You gotta drive through the traffic, that's an issue, and all these different things. So we're going and dealing with these things, but we have to be patient and wait. Yes. And David, he was going through a lot of things, and we know David went through a lot of challenges in his own life. And at this time, as I was researching, I wanted to see really what was going on in David's life as he was writing Psalms 27. And at this time, David was dealing with Saul wanting to, to kill him because he... He was just jealous, and he realized that David was going to be somebody special in that kingdom. Quite, probably didn't know exactly what, but he knew David was special in some kind of way. Yes. So he was more or less after David. And you see in the Psalms that David begins to talk about, as he's writing the Psalms, he's relating to each area to, to his life at that time. And the things that David was going through, he had his enemies, he had his challenges, and it's no different than what we deal with ourselves on today. So this word is relevant for us during this time. And it, and it also it addresses the uncertainties and our fears and our anxieties that we have in our, in our lives too. 
And when I think of the uncertainties, and there is another commercial, she said, here she go with another commercial. <laughs> Whenever I hear that for imprint certain, I be saying for God certain. Yes. I be thinking about yes. that when that commercial come on. I said, well, I don't know if it's for imprint certain, but I know I got I have for God certain in my life. I don't have to ask somebody something. I know for God certain that this is going on in my life. And so in verses one through three that we were that we read that we read on this morning. We will begin with, it begins with, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life and whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advances against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. Yes. And here David, when we re we're referring to the light, the light symbolizes the guidance and clarity and truth, whilst the salvation signifies the deliverance from harm. And here we, David, his trust is in God as his light and salvation, which dispels his fears. We hear that. David said, I'm not going to fear. You can even make up, even if a war breaks out against me. I'm not going to be afraid. So you got a bunch of people to come fight me. And that's how it, sometimes it feels to feel like a war, an army is coming up against you. So but we cannot fear. We feel like the army of everything around us is, is trying to beat us down. But we have to be like David, stand firm, affirming in God's trust. And knowing that we have courage yes. and we don't have to be overwhelmed in these situations just as David, when he penned this, he's letting us know that we can stand and have yes. courage yes. and we do not have to allow the situation to overwhelm us. His confidence is rooted in his relationship with God. Just as our relationship should be rooted in God, not allowing our fears and our and anxieties to take the real, real estate in our lives. You know, you don't have anywhere to park. You don't own any part of this body. Hmm. It all belongs to God. I'm not going to allow any emotions that's going to distract me from focusing on my God. And you know, it's easy. We can speak it, but it, it, it is easy for these situations to happen if we are not rooted and see and have a relationship with God in our lives. And it's easy to lead us away. It's easy for us to allow these illnesses to come up, the struggles to overtake us. But we have to remember, we want to have that courage and we want to remember the word and get stronger in God's presence as he's telling us to hold on. He's coming. Yeah. You don't have to be afraid. Yeah. Don't be afraid of these challenges of life. Yeah. It says like, don't, don't fear the child. Don't limit your child. What is it? I'm trying to remember it exactly. I'll get it. But it's, it was a um, saying. Yes, don't limit your challenges because of your fears. And that's what we allow. And these challenges really come to make us strong. They come to build us and have a good, a stronger relationship with God. And it builds our character yes. even the more. Yes. And it gives us more confidence yes. because we get renewed in our peace and because we have a rooted relationship with God. And as we move on to verses 4 through 6, one thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze on the beauty of the Lord. He said to gaze on the beauty of the Lord. Yes. God is so beautiful and he just brings this peace and to gaze. 
depends on something beautiful. Yeah. It just want, you want to stay there. You say, oh, that is so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And you just keep admiring it. You just want to touch it and, mm -hmm. and just be in its presence even more. Because you said, this is beautiful. I like that. Oh, and sometimes it's so beautiful, you just say, you know, I'm going to buy that. That shoe is right. beautiful. Mm -hmm. That coat, that bag is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love the way they did this room. It's beautiful. And you just gaze on it. And that's, just, that's what David is saying, that he wants to just be in the temple of the Lord where he can gaze and be in God's presence. And it says, for in the day of trouble, he Keep me safe in his dwelling. Yeah. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent. Can you imagine? Yeah. His sacred tent is overtaken as his protection mm -hmm. and set me high upon a rock. Mm -hmm. He's high on a rock in a place where he, nobody can touch him. Mm -hmm. He says, then my, my head will be exalted above my enemies. That's because he's high on a rock. He's in this place. And it's not just high on a rock, but he's high in God. He's rooted in a place yes. where no one can bring him down. He's elevated so in Christ that the enemies, they can surround him. But he doesn't have to worry because he has, what it says, at his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. Yes. And if we remember when they talked about how David danced before the Lord. Yes. And he's saying in his yes. sacred place, I will have shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. And that's what we have to do. Even when our enemies are attacked about us, when our fear and our doubts and uncertainties of life come around us, if we just get high up in God and be rooted and know that we're in that sacred place and in his tent, that he is protecting us. And those things are just down beneath us. So if you begin to shout, you already know I have joy. It doesn't matter what you do to me. You cannot harm me because I'm in the sacred place. I'm in the arms of Jesus. I'm in the arms of my Lord and my Savior. And I will sing that music unto the Lord. to verse 7 through 12. Mm -hmm. 7 and 12. Thank you. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a point of David's time where he's waiting and he's waiting. How many times like he's like, okay, year one is down. I, I prayed about this. I, I don't even see a glimpse. I don't even see a sparkle that God is even answering this prayer. Mm -hmm. Now, the year two, three, it could be a, a period of time. And now, this is a point where David is, he, he's wondering, okay, what is happening? So, in these verses, this is where we have to be patient. Because we want everything instant. Yeah. They they where coffee would brew for a long time. They used to boil your coffee with beans on a pot. Then as years went by, they made instant coffee. Yeah. You could just go to your hot water spigot and just pour it in, and there you go. You have coffee. Mm -hmm. We don't. We can put things in a microwave. Years ago, there was no microwave. They had to wait for the food to heat up in the stove. Yeah. That's how you did it. Or they had these little hot plates they would plug in as time went on. And you had the microwave that comes along. And even with the microwave at times, we are not patient with that. It says five minutes. You know, five minutes is really not that long. But I guess when you're really hungry at times, it could be, you know, or it's been in there for a set, it's been in there 30 minutes, 30 seconds, or whatever. And we will be impatient. So that's just how we want instant gratification. That's our culture, instant gratification. But here, this is where David was looking for something instant. He was looking for an instant gratification. And he begins to get a little trouble. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. All right. 
he begins to get a little trouble. So he says in verse 7, hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me. God, my Savior. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desires of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, shouting malicious accusations. And, and here you can hear the, the, the shifting. Now he's getting a little antsy. He's, he, he's, he's thinking about what's going on, and he's like, well, the Lord, I prayed, and the Lord did this. When he was a child, when he was a child, he was a little shepherd boy, and he would pray, and he knew God would deliver, and he would fix it, he would move things out the way. But now he's, he's gotten older. In this situation, whatever he's dealing with at this time is really causing some tension in him, in this transition. He's reflecting on these tensions and his tensions of trusting God while waiting for God to intervene. And this is what's happening. And when we hear this verse, though my mother, though my father and my mother forsake me, it's not that his actual father and mother forsake him. He's feeling this time of abandonment. Mm -hmm. That there's no one there that he can go to, no one there that he can find it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have anyone that he can go and say, you know what? Let me call Sue up and let me talk to her about what's going on. He doesn't have anyone at that time. And we're the same way at times. Yeah. We'll be going through situations. So we just say, I can't call nobody. If I call, and I'm like, no, I'm not going to call. Mm -hmm. Let me just pray a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you call, and sometimes that person may have some insights, but they're not answering your prayer. They're not actually delivering you from the situation. They may be able to talk, but still, you still get off the phone and you're still a little antsy about this and you're praying for, to God and you're starting to wonder and you say, but I, I trust in you, God. I trust in you. But waiting on God can be one of the hardest aspects of our faith journey. And it really requires our patience yeah. to trust, yeah. especially in the delay. Mm -hmm. It's that delay. You go, like, oh my goodness. That trust. And we, and we have to reflect back in the earlier verses where we're rooted. And when we're saying the Lord is my life, when we're saying all of these things and I want to be in your sacred tent. And yeah. we have to recall all of the things that... We are saying, Lord, you are my helper. You are yes. my provider. But when that yes. tension comes, we have to remind ourselves yes. to think back on what we have been saying yes. that we know God has it all worked out. And we yes. have to continue to be confident and trusting and knowing that God's timing is flawless yes. and that he will fulfill his promise in his due time. Yes. And we, we hear the cliche, I'm going to say it's a cliche, we hear this a lot in the church, God may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. It's not an actual scripture, but they say God may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. And we have to know that he has it worked out, so he looks beyond this immediate time when he's working out that situation for you. Because he's looking at down the road, things yeah. that you don't know that's, that's right. that can come. And while he's fixing this, it may resolve something else mm -hmm. that could come up if this isn't resolved. We don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't know how God is working and why mm -hmm. it's delayed. But one thing I do know, that in our patience, mm -hmm. in, in the delay, mm -hmm. that we grow closer to him yes. and we begin to pray yes. even more yes. 
and we understand him more, and we're trusting him more, and the more we trust and reflect and know and remember all of the challenges that he has brought us through in the past, that he will bring us out in the present. So we can allow, we can allow those things that we have written down in paper or in the or in our hearts of what we have asked God to do for us because we know it's coming. Yes. And as we come to the end, hope <coughs> verses 13 through 14 mm -hmm. is the hope in the goodness of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And here David concludes this song with a powerful declaration mm -hmm. that I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. And he says, I will, I remain, it reads, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He said, in the land of the living. He didn't say when I get to eternity that I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord. Because he know God's goodness is right here. We don't have to wait to eternity because God's goodness is right here. And we always talk about the goodness of the Lord. And in verse 14 it says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. So as we're waiting on the goodness of the Lord and the here and now, yes. our wait is not us doing nothing. That's right. Right. Amen. To wait on the Lord doesn't mean you don't do anything. It's just like a woman, she's waiting to birth that child. You're waiting for that promise, that prayer to come forth, to be birthed to you. And she sits there, and then it comes a part where it's just the nesting. And that woman knows that that baby's about to come. But yet she's still waiting, but she's nesting. And in that time, you preparing, and you the woman is usually getting the the mother's getting a room together. You're buying all the different things mm -hmm. so that you have a plan. You have yeah. things in action. So when it comes, you are in a place with God in your way. You're not just not praying. You're not coming to church. It's none of those things. But you're still doing the work of the Lord. It says, wait on the Lord and be strong and take heart and wait on the Lord. And this is what David encouraged us to just be strong in our faith. And we know that God's promises will be fulfilled. The and, and just as David was called an expectation of witnessing God's goodness, we are expecting, right? I just said the birthing, the mother is expecting a baby to come. And we are in expectation of God's goodness. We are in expectation of these things to come. So we're going to walk around and know, and when, we, when people see us, they're going to see that we are walking in the goodness of the Lord and that we are taking courage in who God is. And it doesn't matter how dark the situation may be, we still trust in God. We have to continue to have the courage to wait on him and strengthen and be strengthened in his perfect time as we're waiting. And as I come to a close, yes, I'm coming to a close. Psalms 27, we're just going to go back over some recaps. Psalms 27 teaches us the power of holding on and trusting God's timing. Whether we're facing fear, wanting an answer, or seeking God's presence. This psalm encourages us to remain confident that God is with us. That he hears us and that he will come through in his perfect time. The waiting season is not wasted. It's an opportunity to deepen our relationship, our faith, to come closer to God and prepare our hearts for the goodness he is about to reveal. So when we find ourselves in a season of waiting, remember to hold on. God is coming. He is your light, your salvation, and your stronghold. And we thank God for this word on today.
it was short, but it, this was the word the Lord had given me on today. This word meant even more to me on today because this was my mother's favorite book, Psalms 27. And she would get up and, and, and quote every verse without the Bible. And the more I studied this this week, the more I understand her reason. Because we do have to hold on. Yes. And when you think about your own life and things you're going through, yes. it, is, it is easy to break. It can, you can break. And we're not gonna say it's not, you can't. But if you get weak enough and you get a crack, you can break. And this is why David is, we have this scripture here to let us know to be encouraged. And we have to take time and encourage ourselves because somebody else may not come alone and encourage us. And we have to take courage. We have to read to the Bible for ourselves. We have to tell ourselves, be strong. It's going to work out. Sometimes it will feel like, and I know I've had situations, it felt like the entire world was on my shoulders. But just being strong, and when I look back and I and I think about thoughts that came through my mind, but I it made me stronger even when I was in those weakest moments of my life. It made me stronger. And and this is and this is how I'm able to be here today because if I would have broke, yeah. I wouldn't be here today. Had I followed my mind in some things, I wouldn't be here today. But I thank God because these things come to build us. And a lot of times we look at these challenges of life as pains, but you can allow the challenges of life to be one, one of the two. It can either be your stepping stone or your headstone. And I prefer it to be my stepping stone because it elevated me. And every time the challenge came, all it did was build another layer and another layer for me to continue to become stronger and to walk up. And when I get to a place and I feel that tension, and as I said, that tension, you feel like that tension of a rubber band when you go to stretch it and you, that tension, you can feel that tension. Yes. And some people walk around with that tension every single day. And that's why some people are the way they are because of that tension. And you don't want to say something because they may snap on you the wrong way. And you could be that one person that just broke them to do something that they should, you know, that could be harmful to you, let's say like that, or harmful to someone else. But I found that the more I gravitated to God, the more I got stronger and leaned on him more, I was able to rest in his arms and I was able to understand what David was saying to be in his tent, his sacred tent, and to be up on that rock and to be in his presence and to behold his beauty and his splendor. And just when you think about him, just like the song, when I think about the Lord, and when you think about the Lord, you can see his beauty and his splendor. The more you think about him, you can see his glory rising up, and the more you sing about the sing the songs of Zion, it begins to well up in your spirit, and it just overtake you. And you know that the Lord is there. And when nobody else is there, when you're feeling like David said, when my mother and father forsake me, don't get stuck on that mother and father. It's, it's feeling forsaken by other people and feeling lonely. And we do get that. Yes. But I'm telling you, just to hold on, get rooted deeper in God. The more you're rooted, you ever see how the roots go down all the way down and when they uproot it because 
because of a bad storm or most of the, or it may have gotten a disease. Mm -hmm. And you see those roots and you see them. Look at those roots. And there's sometimes where the roots go so deep that they go into the people's house, into houses, mm -hmm. and it'll mess up your plumbing. Well, you want to be rooted like that. Yes. Not to mess up plumbing, but you want to be rooted. <laughs> So rooted in God that when those storms come, uh -huh. when you feel overwhelmed with life issues, yes. that you know that as long as I hold on, yes. I know God is coming. Yes. If you please stand.